What's up everyone, welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today is going to be my Google Display Advertising tutorial and it's going to be done in about 20 to 25 minutes. So I previously did a much longer version of this tutorial and if you want to find that tutorial you can find it on my playlist. So go to my Google Display Network Advertising Tutorials playlist. I'll link it to the video and I'll put the link in the video description and you can find my full Google Display Ads tutorial. As you can tell this one's 55 minutes. The current video that I'm doing is going to be about half the time. So today I'm going to be showing you how to create Google Display Ads. So if you come here to Google Ads, you want to start by going to ads.google.com. Create an account if you don't have a Google account already. Otherwise, you can sign into your existing account. And I'm going to show you how to run your display advertisements across the Google Display Network, which includes millions of websites, YouTube videos. You can run them across YouTube channels. So you can target a lot of different content with your display advertising. So I'm going to show you how to do that today and go over some of the different targeting options that you can do as well as Google Display Ads smart campaigns. So we're going to get right into it. You want to sign in first or start now and that's going to bring you to your Google Ads account which is going to look something like this once you have it completely set up. Now I have an active campaign here and this is a display campaign so I'm going to show you a little bit about this campaign at the end of the video. But what you want to do first is go over to tools and settings, come to billing and make sure you set up your billing first so that you can actually be charged for your campaign and you can start running your advertisements. The good thing about Google Display Ads is you're only charged when you actually drive clicks. So you can see there's over 15,000 impressions here and 78 clicks. So this cost is only for the clicks that are driven. You're never charged for impressions unless you're bidding on a CPM basis, which I would not recommend doing. So for the most part, you're only going to be charged for clicks when you create your campaign. So before you create your campaign, after you set up your billing, the next thing you want to do is make sure you have conversion tracking set up. So if we open up our conversions here, what you can see is I have a few different conversion actions. So you can add conversion actions using different sources of data. So if we click on the plus sign here, there's website, there's app, there's phone calls, and then you can import conversions from Google Analytics. So my favorite thing to do is use my Google Analytics account. So I have it open here for farmhouse goals. And you can see I have some of these different goals here that I'm recording for my website. The main goal for my website is outbound clicks. So since this is an affiliate marketing website, what I want to do is drive people to my website and ultimately drive them off my website to some of the different affiliates that I'm working with. So what I'm going to be doing is running traffic to this promo page where people can get 10% off and free shipping for the entire month of April. Now this isn't a real sale on my website. I usually don't run sales on my website. I would recommend using your Google Display advertising campaigns to run some of your different promotions in order to drive new customers. So if we come back over here to Google Ads, what I would recommend doing is creating your goals in Google Analytics. So for this, I'm creating a goal for outbound clicks. So every time someone visits my website and clicks on a link that drives them off of my website, it counts as a conversion for my website. So there's different ways that you can track conversions on your website. You can track when people visit a specific page when they sign up for your newsletter, if you have a giveaway thank you page. So some of these different options that you can create. If you start driving people to your giveaway page, then you can track every time they fill out the form by redirecting them to a thank you page and you would just track that page. So once you have your conversion tracking set up in Google Analytics, all you have to do is come back over here and import data from your Google Analytics account. You do need to make sure that you link your Google Analytics and Google Ads accounts. It's a very simple process. Come over here to tools and settings under setup, go to linked accounts and that is where you can link your Google Analytics account. And you can also do it in Google Analytics by going to admin and right underneath product linking here in the admin screen under property, you're going to see Google ads linking. You click on that and then you just link your Google ads account to your Google Analytics account. If we just click on the back arrow here, you create goals by also coming to this admin page and going to goals. So I have several guides on how to create goals and conversion goals for your website. And regardless of the platform you're using, you should be able to track conversions, whether you're running a Shopify website or another website provider. So if we come back over here to Google ads, what you would want to do is click on import data from Google Analytics, click on this, click on continue, and then any of the goals that you haven't imported yet are going to show here and you can click on import and continue. So for mine, I'm going to be optimizing for the outbound clicks goal. So if we click on cancel here, it's going to show all of my conversion actions. I'm going to be optimizing for outbound clicks. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is if we come in here and we edit settings for our conversion, you're going to see the conversion name. And the big thing here is category. So if we come into category, there are sales categories and there are leads categories. So for mine, I'm going to be using outbound click and I'll show you why that's important in about a minute. So we can click on save here. 
You can also come down here and change your attribution model. So if you want to use a different attribution model where you give conversion credit to different parts of when people do click on your Google ads campaigns, you can do that. It's only available for search network and shopping conversions though. So for right now, it's not available for your Google display ads conversions. So it's not something you would need to worry about. Basically, if you drive a lot of clicks from Google ads before you drive a one conversion, then I would probably use something like time decay. If generally people are going to click your ads and convert on your website, then I would use last click. So we'll use save and now we can click on done. So we have our conversion tracking all set up. If you need more advanced conversion tracking, I have a tutorial on my own channel. You can find it on my Google display network advertising playlist as well, based on Google ads conversion tracking. So we'll click on back here and now we're all ready to get set up with our campaign. Now that we have our conversion action uploaded, it's recording conversions. We can make sure that we start driving more conversions using Google display ads. So what we're going to do first is we're going to click here to create a new campaign. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is you usually want to use conversion tracking so you can drive sales or leads. If you're not using conversion tracking, I would recommend driving website traffic so you can only use the sales and leads if you have active conversions in your account that you're recording. So for mine, since it's a lead conversion that I'm optimizing for, I'm going to click on leads here and then under select a campaign type, I'm going to choose display. Now, if you want to keep things really simple for your display campaign, what I would recommend doing is using a smart display campaign. So essentially with a smart display campaign, you're giving Google ads full control over your targeting. So you're going to see here, it's going to say improve performance with simplified ad targeting and management. So it says recommended because advertisers with your campaign goal on average, get more conversions using a smart display campaign. So if you're not running retargeting, if you just want to run some standard audience targeting or placement targeting, if you just want to let Google ads control that using the data they already have about your business and about your website, then you can just set up a smart display campaign here. And all you're going to have to do is create your responsive display ads. So if I choose smart display campaign and we're just going to click on continue for now. So if we scroll down here, essentially all you need to do is choose your location targeting, your language targeting, choose your bidding option keep scrolling down, set your budget. You can use dynamic ads. You do need a data feed for personalized dynamic ads. And then if we scroll down, you're going to see targeting is automated targeting uses website visitor landing page insights and your search campaigns, best performing keywords to automatically target customers across the web. So all you really need to do is create your advertisements, set your budget and set your bid strategy. That's the main thing that you need to set up for a smart display campaign. Now for this, I'm going to change my option here. So we're going to leave, we're doing leads, we're going to be doing display, and then I'm going to do a standard display campaign. So I can show you how to set your different targeting and different ways you can organize your ad groups. So I'm going to be doing a standard display campaign. Now the other option is a Gmail campaign. So that's going to show advertisements to people as they browse their emails in their Gmail inbox. I'll create a completely separate tutorial about creating a Gmail campaign. We're going to be using a standard display campaign and then you always want to enter your business website here. So if you are using a smart display campaign, make sure you enter your website. So for mine, it's going to be farmhousegoals.com and we're going to click on continue. Okay. So we can start with campaign name. I'm just going to leave it as leads display six. You can set your campaign name to make sure it's descriptive. So you understand the goal of your campaign, what you're trying to accomplish locations. So you can set your locations to pretty much anywhere across the world. So if you want to set a specific location, you can do enter another, another location here. Let's just say I want to target Boston. For example, you have the option to target the city of Boston. You can target the Boston, Massachusetts, Manchester, New Hampshire, Nielsen DMA region. You can target Boston, England. So pretty much you can target cities. You can target DMA regions, large markets. You can target airports, you can target universities, you can target states. So I could just target Massachusetts here. So there's a lot of options when you're choosing your targeting. For this, I'm just gonna set it as United States. Languages, you wanna select the languages that your customers speak. So all the languages your customers speak, you can enter here. You can also create separate campaigns for separate languages, be a little bit more of an advanced topic. Keep scrolling down, bidding. So for bidding, generally what I want to focus on are conversions. And then it's going to say, how do you want to get conversions manually set bids? This will give me the CPC enhanced bid strategy where I set my own bids and hopefully drive as many conversions as possible. If we click down here to select a bid strategy directly and we use this drop down, some of the different options are target CPA. So that's where you're targeting a specific cost per action on your website. So if a conversion for your business is worth $10, for example, then you would want to set a target CPA under $10. So maybe I set it at $7. So if I can drive conversions for $7, that means I'm making $3 per conversion. 
I'm spending $7 to get a $10 conversion back to my business. Target return on ad spend is essentially target CPA with revenue involved. So rather than just choosing a set target cost per action, you're actually choosing a percentage here. So if my target return on ad spend is 200%, for example, that means for every $10 I spend, I wanna drive $20 in revenue back to my business. So you also have maximized clicks, maximized conversions, viewable CPM, so that focuses on impressions, maximized clicks and conversions, pretty self-explanatory. My favorite option is to start with the manual CPC bid strategy, increase conversions with enhanced CPC, I'll set my bids as low as possible for display campaigns, and then if I can start driving conversions, I'll usually switch to some of these target CPA or target return on ad spend bid strategies if I start getting more and more data and I am driving conversions, just to see if I can get my target CPA down over time. So next is gonna be budget. So enter the average you want to spend each day, but essentially what you wanna do is take your monthly budget and divide it by 30 and use that for your daily budget. So if my monthly budget is $300, for example, I divide that by 30, I'm gonna get $10 daily. So I'm not gonna spend exactly $10 every day. I might spend $8 one day and $12 the next, but over the course of the month, I'm gonna spend about $300. So take your monthly budget, divide it by 30, and then use that as your daily budget. So for this, I'll just set it at $10 for now. If we come to additional settings, there's ad rotation, ad schedule, start and end date, devices, frequency capping, so you can actually cap how many times an individual user is gonna see your advertisements, campaign URL options, dynamic ads, conversions, and content exclusions. So if we come into conversions here, it's gonna say use the account level include in conversion settings. So that would optimize for every single conversion action that I have uploaded into my Google Ads account. So rather what I would wanna do is choose conversion actions for this campaign, and then I'm gonna select the outbound clicks conversion. That's the main conversion for my business. So this is the one I wanna optimize for. Content, content exclusions, what I can do here is say, I don't want my ads to show on content. For example, tragedy and conflict, sensitive social issues. So you can take some of this sensitive content out for your brand. It's really up to you if you wanna do this. Sometimes I'll just remove these sensitive cop content type topics. So we'll get rid of that for content exclusions. You can set frequency caps, devices, you can update if you want to. I'm gonna keep everything exactly as is. So now we're gonna be creating our first ad group. I would recommend setting different ad groups for different types of targeting that you're using. So if I'm gonna create two ad groups, what I would wanna do is start with one where I'm doing an in-market audience, for example, and then maybe the other one, I'm gonna use a custom intent audience. So if you're not familiar with the different targeting options you have here with Google Display Ads, if we come over here to browse, you can target remarketing audiences, similar audiences, in-market audiences, life events, custom intent audiences, affinity, custom affinity, and detailed demographics. So when it comes to audiences, you can target all of those different options. Generally, these bottom two categories are gonna perform the best if you're trying to drive conversions. Affinity, custom affinity, detailed demographics are gonna be much better if you're just trying to reach a large audience with broad messaging. So what's gonna really perform the best is gonna be remarketing. So if we come in here and you can see website visitors, I can target all visitors from Google Analytics. So the last 30 days, I can target my converted audience if someone has already converted on my website. I could do new users 30 days, and I can target people who visited any page on my website or a specific combination of pages on my website over the last 540 days. So if I choose this, it's gonna target anybody who has been to my website over the last 200 or 540 days. And you can see over on the right-hand side, it's saying 2.5 million impressions per week are available for this audience. So that's a pretty large audience. I can click done here, just target my remarketing audience, not worry about demographics, not worry about content targeting, set my bid and it's gonna start targeting people who have visited my website over the last 540 days. Now, if we come back over here, we'll get rid of this one for now. One of the types of audiences that are gonna create are similar audiences that use your remarketing data to create a set of people that are gonna be very close to the people that are in your existing remarketing audiences. So for example, if I use this similar to converted audience, it's gonna find people who have not converted on my website already, but are very similar in terms of their interests, their demographics, their browsing history, to the people that have converted on my website. So what you would imagine is the people that are gonna be in this similar audience are gonna be very relevant to the types of products and services that I'm promoting. So those are a couple different options down here at the bottom, remarketing and similar. Next, I wanna go over in-market, life events, and custom intent. 
So if I have this one selected over here, it's gonna be selected for my campaign, so I wanna make sure I get rid of it. So if we come in here, it's gonna show custom intent auto-created, so I can click on this dropdown. They have new audiences and previously used. So I can use this farmhouse decor. It's an auto-created custom intent audience. It should be perfect for what I'm trying to promote. Only 11 million impressions per week, so that's not a huge number. So we can start targeting this audience right away. So custom intent you can create yourself. So if we click on this plus sign here, what you can do is enter related your keywords and URLs. They're gonna have a bunch of keywords over here to the right hand side. I can add all of them and then I can start and create this custom intent audience sample. So I can click on create and I can start targeting this audience right away. So that's one that I can create yourself. So if you just click down here on the plus sign, just click here, use the keywords from your search campaigns, use the keywords that you're targeting for your search engine optimization efforts. So you can enter as many keywords as possible here. And the more keywords you enter, as long as they're gonna be relevant to what you're promoting, the better your audience is gonna be. So we're gonna click on cancel here. I'm not gonna be targeting this one for this example. So this is auto created, any of the ones that you create. So this is the one I just created here. I can start targeting right away. Next is in market audiences. So these are people that are actually in the market for something. So for example, if we look at autos and vehicles, so we click on this drop down here and we just look at motor vehicles, for example, motor vehicles by brand, keep coming down. If I click on Acura, these are gonna be people that are in the market to buy an Acura. So it might be a used one, it might be a brand new one, but Google is able to use people's browsing history, the things that they're searching, the websites that they're visiting, the, everything that they're looking at to put people in these in-market audiences. So if I get rid of this one for now, you can go through all these different options here. There's a lot of different in-market audiences that you can choose from, apparel and accessories, arts and craft supplies, autos and vehicles, pretty much any category you can think of. Now, as Google gets more and more data about your business, if you come here to ideas, a lot of times it's gonna show you some of the in-market audiences that are gonna be the best for your business. So this right here is home decor in-market. So I can target this and you can see right over here, top related audience, bedding, curtains, carpet installation, top YouTube categories, storage and shelving, interior decor and furnishings. So I can click on home decor and that's gonna target everybody who's in the market for home decor. Now, if I'm doing something specific to a living room or a bedroom, then I can target those as well. But let's just say I wanna target this home decor audience, we'll click on done. So now we can target this one right here and get started with creating our ads. So that's kind of a high level overview of targeting. Again, check out our playlist. So if you come to this playlist and you go to Google Display Network Ads Targeting, I go through pretty much everything you need to know about it in 25 minutes. So for this campaign, we're gonna come back over here. Let's say I wanna target home decor and I can come in here to demographics and say, I only wanna target females and let's say 35 and up. So we're targeting females 35 and up. That's one of the best audiences for my business. Parental status, I'm just gonna leave it wide open and household income, I'm gonna leave wide open as well. So we'll click on done. So now I'm only targeting female 35 and up, 4 billion total weekly impressions. So that's still a lot of impressions. So I might wanna narrow that down a bit. If I want to expand it, I can come here to targeting expansion and go to more reach. So if we do that, you can see it's giving me 10 billion plus impressions, or I can turn it off altogether. Targeting expansion is going to increase your reach based on the targeting and settings selected above. So they're going to find people who aren't exactly in these targeting audiences and demographics, but that are going to be very similar to the people that are in these audiences and demographics that I've set. So right now it's saying 3.9 billion weekly impressions. Now the other thing we can do, so I always recommend targeting specific audiences and people across the internet. You can also target content. So one of the things we can do is come into content, go to topics, and I can just say I only wanna target home decor type. So I'll do home and garden. So I'm only gonna target those topics with my advertisements. So now we're down to 480 million weekly impressions, so that's dropped significantly. So we're gonna be targeting a specific audience with specific demographics that are viewing websites that are in the home and garden topic. So we can click on done and we can set this as our targeting. A couple different options if we come to content targeting here are keywords. So I don't really use keywords anymore. They say to try custom intent audiences rather than audience keywords, even Google says that themselves but we can target all these keywords and it's gonna find content that's similar to those keywords. It's not perfect, so I don't really use this too often. It generally becomes more broad than you would think. And then the other option here with content targeting is we can target placements. So we can target specific websites, YouTube channels, YouTube videos, apps, and app categories. So if we come here and I just type in home decor, for example, it's gonna find websites, it's gonna find YouTube channels that are related to home decor. 
So if I come into websites, you're going to see these are all home decor related websites. If we come back over here, YouTube channels, it's going to find some different home decor type channels, DIY channels. So you can target specific websites, YouTube channels and videos with your ads as well. If you do choose placements here, then it's going to narrow down your targeting. So for example, I choose the topics of home and garden. So you can see it narrowed down my weekly impressions because I'm only targeting those to website topics with my advertisements. So we're pretty much all set with targeting here. Again, check out this video, Google Display Network Ads Targeting for more information. Next, I'm gonna be going over responsive display ads. I have a video about that as well. I also have a video about strategy and setting up different ad groups, different targeting options, and different options in terms of strategy for driving your goals. So we're coming back over here to our display campaign. The last thing we need to do is set our bid. So I usually set my bids very low. So I'm targeting for these weekly impressions, 480 million. So a specific audience across a specific topic. I'm gonna to set my bid at 15 cents. I'm gonna to try to drive clicks as low as possible to reach my daily budget of $10 per day. So next what you wanna do is create a responsive display ad. So with a responsive display ad, you're able to upload 15 images and up to five logos. You can upload a video if you want, and then you can create headlines. So up to five headlines, a long headline, description line, business name, and then down here under more options, you can do a call to action test text. So with this, I can do shop now, keep it as English, and then I can also do custom colors so I can use my actual brand colors here. Okay, so I added my brand colors. I usually keep this checked as well. So now we'll come all the way back up to the top, set our final URL first. So I'm gonna be sending people to this landing page that talks about my April sale. So we'll come back over to our display campaign, set our final URL. We wanna add some images and logos. It's first gonna scan your website. It's using our final URL to scan our website. We can also come to recently used if you've already uploaded images here. So I can use some of these images right here. You can upload images. Just make sure you look at the requirements. So for the images, there's square images and landscape images. The minimum required for a landscape is 600 by 314 pixels. Square is 300 by 300. And then you also wanna upload a logo, which includes a landscape and a square. So for this, the minimum required is 512 by 128. And for the square, it's 128 by 128. So I've already uploaded all my files here. They also have stock images you can look through. I'm gonna be going to recently used, and if I use an image, let's say this one's 1500 by 785, I click on it, you can use it for a landscape version of your advertisement and the square version of your advertisement. So I can use this image for both. So I can, let's say, we'll set it there. We'll select these two ratios. So now I have this one image selected. I can use this as my logo. So this one is only gonna allow me to use it as a four by one. It's 800 by 200 dimensions, select one ratio. We'll use this as our other logo. This is gonna be our one by one. So this is gonna be our square logo. So make sure you select logo at the top. So now we have our two logos set. So we have both of our logos set. We have one image here. So you wanna use a few more images. So we'll click on this one over here, use both square and landscape. So you can move this around a little bit if we want, select a couple ratios and we'll use one more. The best practice is to use all 15. There's really no downside to using more and more images here. But for this example, I'm just gonna be selecting these three images using the three different landscapes. If we come over to our assets, you can see we're using six out of 15 images. So three landscape ads and three square ads. We have two out of our five logos selected. You can upload logos with different colors and different styles in terms of being a horizontal logo versus a vertical logo. So you can upload different types of logos and images here as you're creating your advertisements. We'll click on save, keep coming down. You can add a video. If we click on video here, you can enter a YouTube URL. If you've already used the video, it's gonna show up here. So any of the videos you wanna use, you just enter a YouTube URL here and it's gonna bring up that video. You can use it in your advertisements. I'm not gonna be doing that for this example. Next, I'm gonna be adding my headlines. So you can add up to five headlines. And the way these ads are gonna work is Google Ads is gonna automatically use different images with different headlines. Sometimes they'll use your long headline. They're gonna use different description lines here. So Google Ads is gonna to continue to make over a hundred different combinations of advertisements, hundreds of combinations. So using all these images that you upload, the more combinations they can create, the more they can test, and the more data they get over time, the more they're gonna show the top performing advertisements. So I'm gonna set my headlines, my long headline, and my description line now. 
Okay, so I've added all five of my headlines here, my long headline, and then I have my five description lines. I've set my business name, Farmhouse Goals. I have my more options down here at the bottom, my call to action, my custom colors. Come up here to the top, we can go through some of these ads real quick. So if you just click on this arrow, it's gonna show some different ad formats. So you can see it's using different images here. It's using different headlines, different description lines. And then we have our call to action here at the bottom. If you come over to key ad formats, you can look at image ads, text ads, and native ads. So you can look at all these different advertisements before you click submit. But for right now, we're all ready to launch our campaign. So we have our targeting set. We have our advertisement here. We can click on add to ad group. You don't need to create multiple responsive display ads because one ad is gonna create hundreds of combinations, but you can if you wanna use different promotions or you wanna see what types of text or images are working the best with people, you can create ads with a couple different themes. So maybe where one focuses on a promotion, one focuses on new products. So you could do different things like that. But for right now, we're gonna click on create campaign. So this is how to create a Google Display Advertising campaign. Again, if you don't wanna set your targeting like I did, if you don't wanna automatically set some of these in-market audiences and your demographics and parental status, the audiences that you're targeting, some of the content that you're targeting. So if you would rather just leave this in Google Ads hands, I would recommend just using a smart display campaign. They're very easy to set up and your targeting is completely automated. So we have our ad here, we can click on continue to campaign, and now we're all set. So we have our in-market audience ad group here. What I would recommend doing is targeting a few different audiences. So create a new ad group, maybe target a custom intent audience in that ad group, keep your max CPC exactly the same, and then over time, see what's gonna perform best. If we come over to our other campaign here, and we click on it, you can see I have one ad group with a custom intent audience, one ad group with in-market. Not getting any data for in-market yet, so I could always pause this ad group and see how my in-market audience performs. For right now, I've been driving some conversions with this custom intent audience. Would like to get this cost per conversion down, but this is how to create a display advertising campaign. Some different things to keep in mind in terms of targeting, ad creation, driving conversions. So if you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.